so I've done my base and my brows already um, off camera just because I wanted this tutorial to be focused more on the eye look um, but what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to use my P. Louise base um, this is an eyeshadow base which is really good for making um, the pigment a bit more vibrant, more colourful um, and just blends really well this is shade 2 and I will be using my favourite um, cut crease brush by Molly O'Brien these are like my favourite brushes to use at the minute so I'm going to start off by putting a little bit on the back of my hand about that size and I'm going to dab my brush, both sides of my brush in it so it's pretty much got a lot of product on it just due to the fact because we want the end to be quite sharp um, the reason for this is because I'm going to go under my brow and basically carve it out and then drag it down onto my lid um, and then we'll blend that out so I do take my time with this and I'm being very gent gentle handed so I'm using the very tip of the brush and following it underneath And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the product down onto my lid. I am going to use pat motions just to pat it on. The reason for this is because it is better to pat this P. Louise base on if you want an even coverage, a full coverage. So when you do the eyeshadow, it doesn't come out patchy. And I just keep adding more until I'm happy with the coverage. And I bring that into my inner eye socket and then out to my temples. And then once I've done that, I just use like a buffing brush, this is a Morphe one. And I'm just gonna buff the edges out. So I have put the base on both sides of my eyes now. What I have done is I've put some translucent powder underneath my eyes, just due to the fact that I have already done my base. So I need that powder to catch any fallout. So, I'm just going to keep that there and then any fallout that falls on top of the loose powder I can actually just brush it, brush it away and it will brush away with the powder. So for today's look I am going to be using the Be Perfect Carnival palette um, collab with Stacey Marie. I literally love this palette. Um, I use it a lot around Halloween time just because like the colours you can tell it's quite a lovely palette but it's got a lot of colourful colours in there. I'm still doing a spotlight eye today. I haven't really decided on a colour that I want to use. Um, I think I'm going to do like a mixture of a pink and a purple. What I'm going to show you today is reverse blend, which is the best way to do a spotlight eye. So I've got like all my favourite blending brushes out. So. I do love the peaches and cream brushes, they are so good and they're so good for value and money. Um, but this one is the PC10, it's quite a fluffy brush. Um, I do use that um, more for a transition colour. And then this is the PC34 brush. It is a bit more shorter and firmer. This is really good for applying um, the dark colour first for, especially for a spotlight eye because um, you can really apply it, pack the colour on well with that. So I'm going to start with that brush today. And then all my other ones are just kind of like fluffy brushes. I like to have a clean one if I need to clean up any edges um, and just a mixture of any to hand, just in case I want to mix it up a little bit. So 
we're going to start with the darkest colour first. So I'm going to start with this colour here, Reckless, that one. And I'm going to literally put a lot of it on my brush, so I'm just going right in the colour. And then I just tap the excess off. And the best way for me to describe this is also before you start, if you get lines like this from where you've done your base, literally just get the same concealer brush that you were using and just pat over it. And also the reason why I don't set this base, we want it tacky, um, just so the eyeshadow can stick to it and the colours come out much more vibrant. I would start from the middle and I am literally holding my brush like far up the brush but in the middle just due to the fact because you want to have that flexibility but also you don't want to press too hard. Um, that's another thing you need, the most important thing is having control over your brush. So you want to just lightly touch your brush and what I'm doing is I'm doing back and forth motions so you can either do that motion or you can literally press and dab I am literally hardly touching my eye with this brush the reason being because we're doing it on a tacky base you don't want to press too hard or move your brush around like that because what it will do is it will move the base and it will mix with the eyeshadow then one you'll get patches so your eyeshadow will look really patchy won't blend um, and it will change the colour of the colour that you've picked up so it will go lighter so with a spotlight eye you do want to keep it in the line with my crease so as you can see I've put it in my crease but I'm a little bit above it so I'm just following it around like the half moon shape. I'm just doing that back and forth motion. And I'm literally using those bristles there. So like, I'm not even using these, these bristles around here because when you do, you'd be pressing that hard. So you wouldn't be reaching that far. And you're only pressing this light. So your eyes only literally gonna meet the top bristles. So the best way for me to describe this is it's a patting motion um, it's the best way to apply the colour especially when you're doing a reverse blend um, just because it's very hard to mix it with the base that way um, and if you're new to like learning reverse blend um, it just means when the, you apply the dark colour first um, and you want it to be very pigmented, you don't want to see any patches from where you've dragged it and blended it in with the base because the base is tacky, but we need it to be tacky for um, the, the colour to look really like powerful in the eye. Um, so sometimes if I can't get in, in the inner corner, I just get a bit of a smaller brush and just poke it in there. Don't worry if it gets on your under eye there because we can either wipe it away or keep it there depending on how I feel at the end of how the look the look altogether looks. So now I have done that colour, so I've kind of done like a half moon shape and I'm gonna use the same brush, I just kind of wipe the excess off on a bit to show. And then I'm gonna go in with influence which is like a dark pink colour and with this technique what you want to do is have the brush 50% on the dark colour and 50% above it and the reason why I explain this is because you want some of the product to mix with the dark that's there but also you don't want to come up too high so I start from the middle and I just use back and forth motion holding my brush really gently not pressing hard at all 
so I'm literally just going back and forth on the area really light handedly. I keep applying it until I am 100% happy with it. So it comes to look like that. So it's gradually building further up the eye. So I'm just adding a little bit more pink on this colour here. Just because what we're going to do next is we're going to use the third colour which is the colour that's going to diffuse the edge out but in a lighter tone. So now that I have done that. I am going to use more of a fluffy brush, so I'm going to use my Morphe M456 and I'm going to dip that into this pink colour here called Pet Talk and I'm not going to put too much on my brush for this one and I'm going to do the same motion but be really light handed so I'm going to be 50% on the pink and 50% off I actually haven't done a spotlight eye like this in so long. I literally do so many of these around festival season time. But obviously that's not happening this year. Um, with everything going on unfortunately. I keep blending until I'm like happy with it. I'm not gonna lie, with a spotlight eye you do have to be patient with it. Um, you have to really take your time with the blending. So now that I've done that pink, I am going to go back in with Influence, which is the pink that I did in After the Dark Colour. I'm just going back over it just to blend all three of these colours together a bit more. Now I've gone in with Reckless, which is the purple colour. I'm going back over the edges of that. And the reason why you go back in is because when you're blending, you're sometimes blending and taking away some of the colour. So that's why you go back in again one more time to make sure it's all blended properly. So I'm just getting a fluffy brush and literally just diffusing the very edge out. So that is the main bit done. And now we're gonna go in and cut the crease. So I'm going in with P. Louise base again, but I'm going in with shade one. The reason being is because I'm gonna go in a bit lighter. Um, because it's a spotlight eye, we want the middle of the eye to be quite light and bright. So the lighter the concealer, the better. Um, you can use white, but I just use shade one. So I'm using the same Molly O'Brien concealer brush, putting it on the back of my hand, getting a lot on my end of my brush so that you get a really sharp edge. And then what you want to do is you want to close your eye and kind of see, you can see where your crease is and you want to put a line there. Once you've done that, you want to look straight, look up, and then look where it transfers and just fill in an outline and what I'm doing is I'm being really really careful I'm using the very edge of the brush and I'm kind of making like an outline so with getting the shape of the spotlight eye, you want to keep it curved still, but kind of bring the edges out. So now I've done the outline, I'm just going to drag it down the middle. So it looks like that. I'm not going to lie, this is not my best spotlight eye, but it will do. Um, and now we're going to use that brush that we used earlier, the peach and green one. And we're going to go in with Reckless, which was the darker purple colour. 
and we are gonna go on the edges of this concealer and just buff it out I'm only doing the very edge because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and move the pink after as well so literally done that and now I'm going in with Influence which was the second pink colour that I used on my eyes and I'm just using back and forth motion blending it in really gently you don't have to press hard to blend this so it looks like something like that now that I've done the concealer we are now going to go in with the pigment so I'm going to be mixing maybe we mix three and I'm going to mix so I've got two MAC ones and they are shade vanilla and reflex of pearl and then the peaches and cream pigment in mermaids and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the lids and I'm going to use a flat concealer brush so one like that will do and I'm just going to pick a bit of each pigment and put it in the lid and mix it together so I'll just put it in there and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pat this pigment on And then, now we've put that on, we go back in with the eyeshadow. And I'm going in with the shade Influence, which is the pink colour. I'm just going around the edges and just blending that glitter out so it doesn't look so harsh. And I just keep doing this until like I'm happy with how it's blended out. So that is one eye done. So I'm now going to move on to the next eye. Okay, so I've done the other eye off camera. So now I'm going to move on to a liner. So I'm going to do my waterline and I'm going to do on my eyelid. So the reason why I'm going to do it on my eyelid is so it's a um, disguise for when we put the lashes on. So it hides the band. Um, I also like black in my waterline, especially if you've got blue eyes and quite a bold eye it definitely brightens everything up um, so I'm going to go in my waterline first and I'm using the LA Girl Easy Glide when applying this I apply it on the actual waterline and then in the lash line but now with the top lash line what I do is I just do a thin layer and then I just like to use like a smudging brush like this, it's the Morphe but no, this is a, it's a way better. So I sometimes just use this on its own to smudge the liner because it's so soft. It's just so this doesn't look like such a harsh line like on your lid. So you can smudge it on its own like that. Or if you just use a bit of like black eyeshadow. So I'm using the black eyeshadow lights out in the palette. And I'm just going over it the like very edge just so it softens it a little bit okay so that's the liner done looks a bit crazy at the minute because we haven't got any lashes on so one other thing I like to do is make the inner corner look really bright so I'm just using the peach and cream brush in PC07 and it's really small for like the inner corner and I've just put a bit of the P. Louise Mason shade 1 on the back of my hand I'm just going in, in a very inner corner putting a bit of that product there there's like a tacky base and then I'm going in with that pigment that I mixed up earlier and I'm just going to place it there Look how good that looks. Now we're going to do the eyeshadow um, underneath on the bottom lash line. 
so I've got that black liner that I am going to smudge but I am also I'm going to use the pink and purpley colours that I've used so I'm going to use this Zoeva brush um, it's a detail shader um, but I use this a lot for like the bottom lash line so I'm using Reckless the dark purple colour now I've done that I am going to use the Molly O'Brien brush um this is really good for um smudging colors together on the bottom lash line so i'm going with that um pink color not the really light one but the one we use for the second color i'm just smudging that in with the purple i'm going to add the tiniest bit of the really light pink color that we used last and use it on the very edge I'm just going to use this brush just to blend and soften the edge out so I've done both the bottom lash lines so now we are going to move on to the lashes and now we are going to use my favourite lashes um, I wouldn't personally wear them out, but they're like my favourite for like when I'm teaching lessons and doing like a bold eye like this. The TL Mitchell 2. I love these lashes. They look so good in photos. I'm going to be using the Duo Quick Set Glue. Ignore the state of it. I just well love this glue. It's my favourite glue ever. Um, it's the stick one. So it's got the applicator, apply really neatly on the lash band and it's quick set as well so if you find that you're really struggling with um, sticking lashes on when they're wet this is like the best eyelash glue for that because where it dries so quick you haven't got to panic about it kind of like moving all over the place it will just stick um, so I literally give it like 20 seconds before I just go to put them on and it literally starts to get tacky already so my best advice is sticking lashes on obviously I've done it quite a few times so I do find it quite easy um, but best way of doing it is holding either end and then once you've kind of got it resting there you can go in and just fiddle around with it. This is what's good about this glue because when you first put the lashes on and rest it there, it kind of gets a bit tacky. So when you want to like come away from it and just move it around, it's still got that movement, but it's not gonna come off completely. Oh my God, look at this. Oh, massive but I love them they are insane I love them so I'm just going to put some mascara on the bottom lashes so now that I've done that I'm going to add some lips and then we are done and I will reveal the final look so this is the final look guys if you have any questions then leave some comments below um, I hope I explained it as much as I could um, if you're finding that my videos are helpful but you would like a bit more of a one-to-one -one with learning this type of makeup I do one-to-one -one lessons as well um, I do online training so um, just let me know if you'd be interested in that um, I love training people and helping new makeup artists learn new tricks and tips especially if they're like something that I've learned on my own I like to pass it on to other people um, but yeah this is the final look this 
tutorial was helpful to anyone that was wanting to learn a more detailed, structured eye look. Um, my next tutorial will be coming soon, not sure what yet. Um, if you want to leave me any ideas, then leave them in the comment box below. Um, but don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and click the little bell to remind you and notify you when I upload my next tutorial. Um, and I will hopefully do my next one in the next couple of days, seeing as we are all in self-isolation in a minute. Um, so yeah, I hope this tutorial helped anyone. Um, I enjoyed doing it and I hope you enjoyed it as well. So see you guys again soon. Gonna fly right